OK, so I've received this enigmatic email containing no body text, only an attachment, a Word document named Good Day. Now, although this isn't a macro-enabled Word document, there are probably still risks involved in opening something from an unknown source. To mitigate those risks a little bit, I opened it as a preview in the web version of Word. And here's what I found. It's a pretty standard opener for an advance fee scam, badly written by a character named Sergeant Alejandro, first name Dave asking for my assistance in handling a large sum of money, promising that there would be no danger or risk and that the funds were not stolen. I never asked for that information, but when it's volunteered like this, it's automatically a massive red flag. So yeah, this is obviously a scam. Let's go scam baiting again. So before we get started, let's take a quick look at the anatomy of a typical advance fee scam. For the purposes here, I'm gonna describe a successful scam where the victim does actually get parted from their money. Advance fee scams typically happen in two stages. In the first stage, someone tries to win the trust of the victim and convince them that the scam is real. Once the victim's on the hook, the second stage is where the scammer, sometimes a different individual, works to extract funds from the victim, often starting with a small amount, then making excuses why further and often larger amounts must be paid. Sunk cost fallacy will tend to keep the victim hooked until he's bled dry. While we're here, it's worth mentioning that the aftermath of a successful scam may involve a range of outcomes. Anything from the victim being scammed again to, sadly, the victim taking their own life. In most of my previous efforts, I tend to mess around in this part of the second stage. But for today's session, I've decided my primary objective will be to stall the scammer in the first stage for as long as possible. The bit where the scammer tries to get my personal info. The secondary objective is to try out a couple of responses that people have suggested in comments on previous videos. So let's get started. I replied to the initial email with my usual response, OK, but don't worry, we will be doing this a bit, but not just this. Dave responded with an absurd wall of text. I won't read it all because it's several pages long, but let's just skim a few highlights. First, I think it's probably important to try and figure out who it is we're dealing with. It is Sergeant Dave Alejandro, who is a mechanical engineer for the USA Elite Special Activities Division Special Operations Group, which is part of the CIA, located in the US Embassy in Kabul, which is part of the US Navy, which is part of the force. Hmm, good to know. Sorry, missed a small detail there. He's not a mechanical engineer at all. He's a US special agent. So the letter has a very long and sad story about adoption and bereavement. There's an interesting part where he says he got my contact from Google's contact database. That's interesting because, firstly, the email address where I received this is not a Gmail account. But secondly, because there's no such thing as Google's contact database. On the next page, Dave reveals there's a box of money he wants to secretly move. But he isn't allowed to do that because as a US special agent, he's being monitored. But don't worry, this is all legal and risk-free. After very many more words about military service, conflict and unfortunate circumstances, Dave gets to the point. He will give me 40% of the funds if I help him move the box. He closes page 3 with some interesting words. That nothing ventured is nothing gained. And that success and riches never come easy or on a platter of gold. One of those two things is the one truth that he learned from his life experiences. I'm not sure which one, but it is the one truth, okay? The last little bit was a reiteration that there is no danger or risk, but if I was not to pursue this transaction, I should keep quiet about it. Naturally, I decided to make a video about it instead. Hope that's okay, Dave. Dave had written far too many words, so I replied with just one. Okay. The next reply from Dave was again very wordy, but it was a very standard scam template, rambling on and on about the supposed scenario, but also asking for the sort of personal details that you should never share with strangers on the internet. Rather than providing these details, I just replied OK. Now, let me remind you again, we are doing a little bit of just say OK in this video, but don't worry, we're going to do something different in a minute. Dave sent the same email template over again. I replied OK again. At this point, I started to fear that perhaps this loop would never end, but Dave broke the cycle by asking, So, are you in? Habits are hard to break, but I couldn't bring myself to just reply with those two letters again, so I said, OK. Sadly, Dave just sent the same email template again, and sadder still, I just replied OK again. This must have begun to frustrate Dave a little bit, because he asked, So what now? Casting my mind back to the template email David had repeatedly sent me, I picked out an interesting phrase that I thought needed to be clarified. So I sent this to Dave as a question. Legal and risk-free, OK. Dave now started to write in whole sentences, and he told me that if I wanted to proceed, I should read the previous emails and then provide details. I said, I'll think about it. Dave said, take your time. I said, OK. The next day I asked, are you ready? Dave replied, still waiting to hear from you. So I said, I asked if you were ready. Dave switched to shouty caps to say, yes, I am, and I have sent you the next step. I said, 
OK. Hello? Dave shouted. What is it? I said, I'm ready. Dave sent the template email again. Time to call him out on it, so I told him, I said I am ready. Why did you send an automatic template email? Dave said it's not an automatic template email and that he resent it because I didn't seem to read it properly and could I try again? I said, OK. Dave said, yes. So I asked, OK. So what happens next? Now, Dave sent the template email again, but with one important difference. He's changed the subject line to say in shouty caps, read this email and you will know what is next. I couldn't let him get away with that, so I replied, that's just the same template email you sent before. Am I speaking to an actual human or an autoresponder? That seemed to hit the spot because Dave replied, my friend, listen carefully. If you cannot read and know the next procedure with this transaction, please f off, you idiot. He then sent the same template email again, but this time he added a shouty caps title. The next step is below, so read and understand, you idiot. Now, I have a rule that when scam baiting, I always respond to aggression and hostility with righteous indignation. So I demanded to know why Dave was being so rude when I was only trying to find out how to play my part. I also asked why he just sent the same email template again. At this point, we are privileged to discover Dave's melting point. Here it comes. You asked me for the next step regarding this transaction, of which I sent you, but you are not ready to settle down. Take your time to read my email. How will you know the next step if you don't read my email? Yes, I sent you the same template again, because that is the next step, and there is something inside the mail that is required of you to know and then provide. Listen carefully. If you are here to waste my time, sorry to say, you can f*** off. I have a lot over here on to think about. Do you even know what it is to be in a place like Afghan? Read through that same template again, and then get back to me. You idiot. So I replied to ask, So, it is a template after all. Also, you said there was something inside the mail. I checked and there's no attachment. Maybe you forgot to attach it. You seem a bit stressed, and I know that can sometimes distract people from details like that. Dave sent an extract of the same template again with the angry question, so do you want to tell me that you didn't see this part of the so-called template? I said, I saw it several times. You keep sending the same email over and over. I didn't get the attachment, however. Please could you send it? Dave wanted to know why I didn't provide the details, having seen it several times and asserting that he never mentioned an attachment. I know that, of course. Time to offer a little bit of emotional support. I suggested that all this angry response isn't helping to move the conversation forward. Surely as a man with military training, you must understand the necessity to maintain a clear head in stressful situations. I also added, OK, if you don't know how to attach the instructions, please just tell me clearly what you want me to do next. But sadly, Dave was gone. But never mind, that was about three weeks of stalling and messing around, and I never even told the scammer my fake name. Objective accomplished. So that was a little bit short and sweet, but I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.